try and explain some of the edu educational ideology that has shaped my quest to the organisation that I run and how it relates to education in this country um, in a more general way. I realise that education is quite a contentious political issue at the moment, so I'm going to try not to talk about the spending cuts and tuition fees and that kind of stuff. But obviously, when we talk about it um, afterwards in the discussion and questions, um, feel free to talk about that. Um, but I'm going to avoid talking about it in my talk. Um, something else that uh, I should probably say for the sake of full disclo disclosure, I was educated privately. And that makes me quite unpopular in certain circles. Um, and I mention this because my own experiences have undoubtedly shaped my beliefs and values. Um, although I'm not sure that our school's motto, which was in fide vale, that means go forward in faith, I don't think that really had the intended effect on me. Um, I'm going to try and keep this talk reasonably short so we'll have time for questions and all that at the end. So just yeah, don't worry about that. Or if you want to raise your hands in the middle. Um, let me give you a little bit Um, 
So this is one example of a backdrop of general hatred and mistrust towards atheists in itself, a possibly a cultural remnant of the Cold War. Atheism was equated to communism. Um, and there is continuous propaganda that being an atheist is un-American and unpatriotic. As you can see in the billboard, which I'll read out for you because it's not very clear, it says, attention lunatic atheists and their lawyers, anti-God is anti-American, anti-American is treason, treason traitors lead to civil war. And from the looks of the address, that's from West Virginia. So, I mean, I've, I've been to America and there are a lot of billboards kind of like this. Um, so perhaps you can see why Campfest was necessary um, at that time. It was started in Kentucky, sorry, let's just say Kentucky, but I put KY, um, which is one of the most religious states in the US by Edwin and Helen Kagan. And their attempt at starting this was um, a kind of support system for non-theists. Um, they say, we attempt to provide our children with a night light in a dark and scary room and to attempt to strengthen them to live in a world largely controlled by doctrines of faith, not by do doctrines of reason. Um, so as you can imagine, um, they, they want to encourage critical thinking and strengthen the community, but there's also quite a lot of skepticism and atheism in their program. Um, so the question is, do we actually need a nightlight in the dark in the UK here? Because it's a far more secular society. Um, according to the last census, as you might know, around three quarters of the population claim to be Christian. Um, but further polls uh, have shown that many of them just don't really believe in anything. Um, and the percentage of non-religious people in this country could be as much as 50%. Um, this is from, you can't see that, but it's the British Social Attitudes Survey in 2006. And the lighter bars on this chart are represent those who are not very religious or not at all religious. And this purple bar here is the very religious and this is the somewhat religious. So you can see just by that chart, um, there's really uh, quite a lot of people who religion just doesn't matter in their daily life. Um, so, I mean, certainly from my experience, in my age group, you can find someone, come across someone who says, oh yes, religion is very important to me. That's actually a little bit strange and uncommon. And it's not just because I hang out with a bunch of atheists all the time. Um, and even if atheism itself isn't that widespread, um, those who answer none on, this, on the question, what is your religion, do you have a religion, they say none. I mean, that's basically atheism. So uh, that's really, really common. I'm sure there's very few people who don't know anyone like that. Um, so, I have to admit that when I decided to start up Camp Quest in this country, I was a little bit intoxicated with, with the activism. I'd just come over from America, and it was great, the idea that we could you know, fight the religious privilege and all that. Um, and I'm sure that any students who've been involved with activism have, can relate to that feeling. Um, so, the first year of Camp Quest, I rather naively kept up the spirit of this, um, of this Camp Quest in the UK, uh, sorry, in the US. And so the camp was very much marketed as for the children of atheists, agnostics, and, and all those kind of people. Um, I didn't realise at the time that the press tends to pick up on the word atheist and distort it and use it to fuel their ongoing narrative about how we're all really angry and we hate religion and we're all going to take over the world or something. Um, but in the, in the two years since, since that first camp, um, something has happened within our organisation. It's probably to do with me as well. Um, there's been quite a shift, I think, in going away from marketing it, or at least thinking of it as a camp for atheism and for atheists, and going towards a general educational ideal. Um, and I, I think that things really are different here. Um, I, I'm sure if any of you have been to the States, you'll notice the difference. Um, and as much as it seems to invalidate the work I've put into it, um, I don't think we actually do need a safe haven or a, or a nightlight in the dark in this country, um, possibly with the exception of ex-Muslims who um, live in a largely Muslim community. Um, obviously there exists the Council of Ex-Muslims uh, who actually cater for this very group, so I, I think in terms of community support there's, there's not actually that much that we need to offer people. Um, so I, after the first year, I began doubting myself and asking, so why do we even need CampQuest in this country? 
Um, so I move on to the to the topic, which is. Um, so is it appropriate to ask about that last bar chart? Why there was a, appears to be a peak that uh, is, is disappearing? If you look at it around about thirty, there seems to be um, more extremely or very religious people um, in, in the other of the other of the age groups on either side. Why did, how did that? Happen? Yeah, well, I mean, that can be explained in a number of ways. It could be generational. So, I mean, people who, it starts around 50-ish, doesn't it? Um, it? If you go back 50 years when they were born, you'll see that the, the country was a little bit more... No, that's I can understand. It's, it's that peak around 30, which worries me, because that's the childbearing year, isn't it? 55. The, 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 the peak yeah, so the 25 to 45, the purple one seems to be higher than either side. You mean this one here? Yeah, the, the purple is, is very religious. It's the highest... Um, I imagine, well, it's very difficult to say. Um, yeah, I could pluck in any reasons out of, out of thin air. Um, but they're the ones who are having kids, that's, that's my thought. So the poison is. Yes, the children is. Yes, it's just a thing. Yeah, it seems that it's, it's the, the not berries tend to go to somewhat in that age. Um, I, I honestly, I can't explain yeah. that. Um, yeah, but it was shape supporting um, church schools, but big schools. Uh, yeah. Little green schools, all around the places you know. Our, our church being the schools. Yeah. Your nearest local school in the country is a you know, church being the schools, kind of. Yeah. Um, just like so a point is that it, it's a graph rather than that, so it could well be the way school issue because it's a graph of how important, how important the religion is in your daily life. So if it means that your kids are going to school, you want them. Yes, it's very important, even though we don't believe in any of it. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's a good point. I mean, as you'll, if you've got kids, you know that oftentimes you have to be a bit deceitful to get your kids into a school if you want them to go to that school. So that could be one reason. That's probably the most likely reason. Um, because it really goes down after that, doesn't it? Mm. Um, so, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay. So, coming back to sort of why we need a camp quest in this country, um, kind of brings me on to the topic of the day, which is think about education. Um, and my own experience of education is that it tends to follow quite um, a similar template to other Western countries. Um, and that is sort of division into very distinct subjects. So, for example, all throughout my school life, I studied English literature, English language, um, modern languages, French, German, maths, sciences split into three, history, geography, music, um, and, they, and they were very similar. And, and I think most schools, I don't think I'm, I'm wrong in saying that, but state schools in this country tend to follow quite a similar um, curriculum. Um, and in my experiences, there wasn't really an overlap between the subjects. You had teachers in one subject, and they taught you that subject. And the teachers in another subject didn't really overlap, even though there may be a good ground for overlapping between history and geography, or you know, um, modern art and I don't know, maths. Um, yeah, that would work. Um, so they, they really stuck. They stuck to the book, and we passed the exams, and everyone was very happy, and they congratulated themselves because, well, we're an amazing school, and we get these results. Um, and it's strange that it doesn't really strike anyone as odd that we teach this way. We never seem to question why. Why are these subjects and not others? Why isn't philosophy or social science or architecture taught to seven-year-olds? Why is it history or geography? Um, and more importantly, why did I have to wait until I was 19 to be taught the scientific method? Which is, to me, the most important part of science. Um, and it's the most useful part for me in my adult life as a non-scientist. It's the most useful thing I could have been taught at that age. Um, and it's funny, I think maybe I've come to this realisation because the educational path I've taken since leaving school has been stuff that just wasn't covered at school. I did psychology, I did sociology and anthropology. And I, I know you can take them at GCSE, but I'm not sure that they're very widely offered. Um, so, I can see a few reasons for why this status quo have been maintained. Um, so the purpose of, of education, um, perhaps maintaining tradition because um, our parents were taught like that, 